Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 12 puzzle using Ivy. In this puzzle, we have a map of a cave presented as an undirected graph, and we're supposed to count the number of distinct paths from the start node to the end node, with the complication that nodes with lowercase names can only be visited once, while nodes with uppercase names can be visited any number of times. The input is a bit texty, so let's use awk to turn it into Ivy syntax. We're going to write data.ivy and then do all the files. I'll echo file equals and then read the text file and run awk with a field separator of dash so that the two different nodes are $1 and $2. And then we're going to keep assign these nodes identifiers. Start can be 1, end can be 2. There are two of them so far. And then for each field on the line, which there's two, we'll say if we haven't assigned an identifier yet, we'll give it one. And if that is an uppercase, we will um, make it negative. And, other, and then no matter what, we'll just keep saving the IDs. All right. And then at the end, uh, yes, no, there we go. Brace the end of the four, brace the end of the line. And then at the end, we'll print graph of S and we'll let IV deal with what to do about graph. Great, now we have something we can read. So let's run IV. We have to define the graph operator, which will just make it do lists of pairs. Now we can read the data. Samples here, inputs here. So the usual way to represent a graph in an array-based language like Ivy is using an adjacency matrix, which is a square array in which cell i comma j is a Boolean saying whether there's an edge from i to j. And so the first thing we need to do is figure out how large that array needs to be. That's just going to be the size is the max of the absolute values of the numbers. In this case, it's 6. So let's save that as a global n. And now let's build the graph. Um, instead of recording Boolean zeros and ones, let's record the actual target node number, which will be a little bit easier to use, and it will let us remember which ones are negative, uh, meaning that they're uppercase and you can go to them more than once. So the adjacency matrix for a single edge is all zeros except for that one edge. And since this is an undirected graph, each edge is really two edges, so we'll add um, two non-zero entries. So let's write an adjacency matrix for a single edge. So we'll start out with an all zero matrix, and then we'll set the point corresponding to that edge to be the target, and then we'll do the same in reverse, and then we'll return that. And so the adjacency matrix for the edge one to minus two looks like that, that looks correct. So now the overall graph is gonna be the sum of the graphs for the adjacency matrix for all the edges. So we can do that by adding up along the first axis all of the adjacency matrices. That looks good. Let's save that. Um, let's check if we're still okay. Whoops, oh, we didn't save that. Let's save that. And now let's check it. Good. Now, one thing that's nice about this representation is that it makes it easy to mark a node as no longer available to visit. You just clear that column from all the different lines. And so if we want to clear a column, we can build a matrix with minus ones where we um, want to save and zeros where we don't want to save. So if we're trying to clear column four, we can use minus not four equals iota n, and that will put a zero just right there. And then if we and that with the graph, we clear the four column. So let's save that, how to mark a graph as having used a particular point. This is g and minus not p equals i o to n. So if we say g used four, that gets us what we want. And notice that if p is negative, meaning we can go back, then that neg the minus three is not in i o to n, and so g used minus three is just a no-op, it leaves g alone. All right, so the next thing we need to answer is for a given uh, position p, where do we go next? And we can do that by just looking up uh, the the um, row in the graph. So uh, in this case, we took the absolute value of minus three to get three, and it's just that row. But of course, we don't want to see the zeros, so let's get rid of those. Not equal zero, sell that. So one, two, four, and five are the places we can go. 
Let's save that. I'm going to say g of abs p not equal to 0, cell g of abs p d max minus 3. That looks good. All right, so now we're ready to actually count the number of paths through this graph from start to end. We can define an operator, g count p, which is going to be, for a given graph, the number of paths starting at p and ending at the end. So if we're at the end, there's one path, you just stay where you are. Otherwise, we need to update g to say that we've used the current position and can't go back there. And then we want to add up the counts for all the possible next places. And this might be an empty list if there's no next places. So let's just make sure there's a zero there so the counts add up to something. And then um, that's it, actually. That's the answer. So we'll say g count one. That gets us 10. There are, in fact, 10 paths in that example. So that's good. So let's save that. Uh, we'll start by computing the size. And then we will run the count. So if we count the sample, that's good. Count sample two. 19, next one's supposed to be 226. That's good. All right, let's try the input. 4707. All right. Now, in part two, we're allowed to go back to a single lowercase node twice, but all the others just once, and we get to pick which node. So that makes more paths. Now there's 36 paths through the original. And we can't play uh, tricks updating the graph anymore for that that condition. So we need to store the state about where we have already been somewhere else. To do that, since we don't have that many uh, arguments to any particular function, let's just make the graph a little bit bigger. So we'll say the size can be 1 plus the max instead of just the max. And then say n equals size sample grid sample. Now we have this extra row and column of zeros. We'll just use the row. And we can store in that row um, the number of times we have visited each lowercase uh, node. And so uh, we'll have to update used and next to use that row. So the first thing we have to do is update used. Um, that is not going to work anymore. So, but it's still okay for the start node and the end node. It's just not okay for the others. So uh, for those, we'll just keep the old one because we're not allowed to visit those twice. And otherwise, we'll make a copy of G so that we're not updating the caller's copy. And we'll update the one cell for P at the bottom row to add one, and then we'll do that. So now if we say G equals this grid, and we say G used uh, two, ah, two is the end, so that's okay. G used four, that puts a one here. All right. So now we need to fix the next function. Next was this nice simple expression. Uh, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, so before we were just looking for is it not zero. But now we need to say, and the count here has not been incremented too far. So let's start by just trying to re-implement the old behavior. So that's going to be and g of n of p is less than 1. Then it's still allowed. OK. So let's see if we still are getting the right answers. Index minus 3 out of range. That's cool. Abs of p, I guess. That's not right. What happened? What happened? Oh, we shouldn't be doing this. We should be doing this. That's what's wrong. OK, so we're going to, this is a whole vector. We want to have a whole vector here. We don't index by p at all. There we go. Now we're still getting the old answers, which is exactly what we want. And now we can finally update this to um, implement the you can go one place twice rule. To implement the you can go one place twice rule, we can change this to 3 minus the max of g of n. When you've gone somewhere twice, the max is 2, and so you, you go back to less than 1 for everyone else. If you've gone only once to certain places, then this is 3 minus 1 is 2, so you can go up to 2 for one of them. You get to pick. And if, it's, if you haven't gone anywhere, it's less than 3, but you're only going to add 1, so it's fine. They're all zeros. So let's see if things are still working. Count sample. There are 36. Count sample 2. 103 is the right answer. Count sample 3. 3509. Great. Let's count the... Ooh. That's taking a while. Well, there were supposed to be more paths, so I guess we'll see how long this takes. We're clearly reaching the limits. Oh, there we go. 
130493. Submit. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.